Welcome back. In this video, we are going to solve equations containing radicals. Recall that the square root and the squaring are inverse operations of each other. So, as we know, the square root of a of a squared their inverse operations is a. Okay, and this applies to the cube root, um, etc. as well. So, the cube root of 2 cubed, their inverse operations is simply 2. Our cube root and our cube offset each other. Looking forward with that, what we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. If we have a equals b, if we square a and we square b, then a squared will equal b squared. All that really tells us is that it's okay to square both sides of an equation. Now, when we're squaring both sides of an equation, which is what we're going to be doing here, we have to watch out for extraneous roots. Okay? These are phantom solutions that result from squaring both sides. For example, if x is 2, we say x equals 2, and we square both sides, we get x squared equals 4. Right? 2 squared is 4. And then when we solve for x, and we take the square root of both sides, we get plus or minus 2. Okay? Right? Don't we know that x squared minus 4 equals 0, and if we factor that, we get x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0, and then we get x equals negative 2, or x equals 2. So sure enough, when we square root both sides, we have to use plus or minus, we get x equals plus or minus 2. It comes from solving it in a different manner. Well, Wait a minute, if x was 2 when we squared both sides, we ended up with this extra solution. Negative 2 here is the extraneous root. Okay, that's the extra solution that resulted from squaring both sides, or from our x squared. So when we are solving in these particular problems, it's going to be important that we always check our solutions in the original question. Okay? And don't automatically discount negative solutions. Okay? You need to confirm both positive and negative solutions because sometimes the negative solution will be the one that works and the positive one won't. So make sure you check. So here's our process for solving radical equations. When we solve radical equations, we want to rearrange the terms and factors so that the radical is by itself on one side of the equation. That means strip all terms and factors away from the radical. Isolate the radical. Okay. So even if we have 2 times the radical uh, 3x plus 1 minus 4 equals 7, what we're going to have to do is we're going to add 4 to both sides and we will also then divide by 2. Okay? So we get the square root of 3x plus 1 equals 11 halves. Okay? Now everything is stripped away. We don't have this 2 hanging on there anymore, and we don't have the, the negative 4 hanging on there. So strip everything away. And then when you get to that point, then you will square both sides of the equation. Simplify both sides. Now, every once in a while we'll have two radicals. If there's still a radical, you might have to repeat steps one through three, meaning you'll have to isolate that other radical or that second one and then square both sides again. That could happen. And then you solve the equation. So solve for x. And of course, if we have x squared, you're going to have to either square root, like I showed up here above, or you'll have to factor, which I also showed. 
So whenever you solve for x squared, you're either going to have to take the square root of both sides or you're going to have to factor. Okay, and then finally check all solutions in the original equa equation for the extraneous roots. So there's our process. Let's move on to some sample problems. So the square root of 5x plus 3 plus 2 equals 0. We want to clear everything away, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And I'm going to get the square root of 5x plus 3 equals negative 2. So I've isolated the square root. So now I'm going to square both sides. So I'm going to square this side, and I'm going to square the negative 2. And I get 5x plus 3 equals 4. And I subtract 3 from both sides. I get 5x equals 1, x equals 1 fifth. So, checking my work, the square root of 5 times 1 fifth plus 3, that's the square root of 4 plus 2. So, 2 plus 2 equals 0. It does not, so 1 fifth is not a solution, it's a phantom solution, so this answer is no solution. Okay, and some of you may have seen that back here at this step when we had 5x plus 3, or the square root of 5x plus 3 is negative 2. We can't take the square root of something and get a negative number, so you might have seen that at that point. Let's take a look at sample number two. Now that one, everything appears to be stripped away. Okay, I don't have, I'm not multiplying the square root by anything. I'm not adding or subtracting. So now I can go ahead and right away I can square both sides. And make sure in your classwork and your tests and quizzes you show this work because this is the algebra. Square roots just don't automatically go away. You have to square root both sides or pardon me, you have to square both sides. So we get 5x plus 1 equals 16. Subtract 1 from both sides. 5x equals 15 and x equals 3. And we'll go ahead and do our check. So 5 times 3 plus 1 equals 4 that is the square root of 16 equals 4. That checks out, so x is a valid, or 3 is a valid solution. Let's take a look at this one here. We have the square root of 5 minus x equals x plus 1. Once again, everything seems to be stripped away for us, so I can go ahead and I can square both sides. So I have to square all of x plus 1. So we get 5 minus x equals x plus 1 squared. Now, gentlemen, that's not x squared plus 1, but that is a perfect square trinomial. So that's equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. I will add x to both sides. I will subtract 5 from both sides because I have to factor this now. So I get 0 equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. So I need factors of negative 4 that add up to positive 3. So 0 equals, and that is going to be plus 4 and minus 1. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. She's going to smile and give me a positive 3, and I get x equals negative 4, or x equals 1. These are the values of x that make that 0. Let's check to see what works here. We'll try negative 4 first. In our original, 5 minus a minus 4 equals negative 4 plus 1. And we might see that that's not going to work because I can't take the square root of number and get a 
negative 3. So the square root of 9 is not going to equal the negative 3. So we'll try 1. 5 minus 1 equals 1 plus 1. And sure enough, the square root of 4 does equal 2. So that checks out. So x equals negative 4 is our extraneous root there. Sample number 4, I'm going to leave that for you to do that one. Uh, it's a combination of what we saw here where we have to strip everything away. And we might have a perfect square trinomial that you'll have to deal with. So bring that one to class. And let's finally take a look at sample number 5. Now this one's a little different. This is a cube root of 2x plus 7 equals the cube root of 3x minus 2. Well, just like we can square to undo the square root, we can cube both sides to undo the cube root. Fortunately, everything's all stripped away. We don't have to clean anything off the radicals. So we end up with 2x plus 7 equals 3x minus 2. And again, make sure you show that you're cubing both sides. I want to solve for x, so I'll subtract 2x from both sides. I will add 2 to both sides. I get 9 equals x. And let's go ahead and do our check. The cube root of 2 times 9 plus 7 equals the cube root of 3 times 9 minus 2. So the cube root of 25 does in fact equal the cube root of 25. So this checks out. So that wraps up solving equations containing radicals. And we will see you in class.